Can you be thinking of establishing Khalsa Pant Raj with Naam, Barney, Simbaran across the world where arts are flourishing, where Gurmat Naam is flourishing, Sare Sukhi Vasareya, freedom of Taram, freedom of food and clothes, a place where education is, uh, is present, a place where economics can flourish. And how can you build those things in your current day Pant today? The only thing holding back the Pant from reaching its full potential is Param. Think big, because like I said, you probably knew somebody that knew someone in Khalsa Raj. Like that's the distance that we have. This is the first generation that we have today that we are not being displaced. We're not having to survive and move to other countries. You have time, energy and money, but the only problem is you forgot you were kings. So there's a conversation that needs to take place. That how do you build the next era for the Panth? What do you need to do? What is your job in this era? The question is where does your seva and where does your enjoyment, where do you get the cushion of Guru Gobind Singh Ji throughout the seva? To see Ode Vijay Sapag Lai Sakdiya, and that is the beauty of it. Vaheguru, 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 Take mere pyare main man guru roop guru pyari sad sangat ji sache paatsha ji ne apar mein rahmatan barsa ke sanu is bhagiyan kadiyan bakhshiyan han jis de vich gurmat vicharan di sanjh paun da sanu samay milya hai before we begin let's all take the oat asra and the support of Tan Guru Gobind Singh Ji Sache Paatsha Ke He Sache Paatsha Aap Ji Samratha Bakshani Bala Bakshana Ke Aap Ji Di Vidya Padna Te Pada Onda Aap Sanu Bala Bakshan Koi Vi Rasna Vanji Na Rave Kal Gita Paatsha Ji Di Bakshi Hoi Fate Baland Vaj Vaj Balao Ji Vahe Guru Ji Ka Khalsa Vahe Guru Ji Ki Fate Yesterday the Singhs took me to the Ranjit Singh exhibition that was happening at Wallace Collection. I'm sure you guys to see England the Hagea and you guys get to see all of Maharaj Ranjit Singh's throne and you guys get to see Maharaj Ranjit Singh's sword. Whenever you want, you walk into the VNA. There's something different when you see a Pratan Shastar, especially when you look at those dates on these Pratan Shastars. When we hear the word Pratan, which means old, which means in history, sometimes history, other faiths might record as 700 years, 800 years, 1,000 years. We think eras and eras away. But Maharaja Ranjit Singh's kingdom lasted until 1839. Maharaja Ranjit Singh's they passed away in 1839, their kingdom lasted until 1849. The British annexed it in the year 1849. 1849 up until 2024 is 175 years. How much is that? 175 years. There is a chance that your grandfather, while they were young, they probably knew somebody that was a part of Khalsa Raj. There is a high probability that your great-grandfather definitely knew somebody that was a part of Khalsa Raj when they were young. 175 years is not that long ago. I don't know how long your mortgages are here, but the, the country I'm from is 30 years. 5.8 mortgages ago, we had Khalsa Raj. That's it. I'm sure you're gonna, you've already imagined, I'm gonna sign a mortgage, my mom had a mortgage, my grandpa had a mortgage, my kids will have a mortgage, that's four mortgages right there. 5.8, not even six mortgages ago, we had Khalsa Raj. What happened in these 175 years where we have forgotten we're kings? That we don't walk around as royals and we've lost a lot of these attributes. I'll walk you through a couple of things where it highlights the stories of the eras 
or the, uh, of the Gursiks during that time in between this era. Because it wasn't that long ago. And between 1839 to 1708, there's less time in between that, between Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj leaving this physical world and Maharaj Ranjit Singh's Raj taking place. So when we put it into that perspective, it's not previous history. You guys have buildings here in London that are older than Maharaj Ranjit Singh's Raj. The same shastar is that Maharaj Ranjit Singh was holding on to. The, the gun, the bandook he had, the throne he was sitting on, the kapde he was wearing, Maharani Jindakor's earrings as they still exist there. So he could have in fact, let me highlight a little quick story when somebody says, oh, Sikhi is not relevant in this time. The same things don't exist within this time. The way, the things that ex should have existed during the time of Guru Arjan Dev Ji Maharaj, Guru Nanak Dev Ji, Guru Angad Dev Ji. Time in itself is a param. Yet we connected the timeless. When you bend time and you go into those avastas of spirituality, when you can come and go through time as you please, why will I come back into this world again and again and again when those marjivade can do the seva as they come and as they go? Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj was asked, he asked him, Hey Guru Gobind Singh Ji, Sache Paatsha, Why do you still read that same Japji Sahib that's from the time of Guru Nanak Dev Ji? Bada Purana ho gaya ya. And since that time, it's been 200 years. That's more than between you and Khalsa Raj. Gursikhs asked, the yogis came and asked, they said, why do you read the same old Japji Sahib from the time of Guru Nanak Dev Ji? They said, why do you Follow the same term of Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj. Then they asked, why do you still keep case? Oh, the Purana Samadha is the time of Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj. Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj, they say, first tell me, did Guru Nanak Dev Ji have two eyes or four eyes? Or six eyes? Or was, was it a different species? Just two. They said, Maharaj, do si. How many feet did Guru Nanak Dev Ji have? Two. Same as you, right? And they said, yes. How many arms did Maharaj have? They said, Maharaj, physically he had two. Is it the same sun and moon that was shining during that era that it is today? They said, Hanji, it's the same sun and the same moon. Is it the same earth that we walk on? They said, it's the same earth. Is it the same five elements that exist and create the world today? They said, yes, it's the same five elements that make up the body that exists today. Then Guru Gobind Singh Ji says, then if the elements are the same, the sun and the moon are the same, Tarti is the same, the beings are the same, then your ego is the same. <laughs> you want to get rid of that ego? Then you have to read the same Japji Sai from that time. You want to keep the same Riyadha? It's because it, the Tarm has not changed at all. If something has changed, your mind and the things you've conditioned your mind with has changed. In these 175 years, if anything, we've been ideologically assimilated. Where now, before rather than learning Gurmat first and then taking the worldly philosophies that make up the foundations of the democracies that we exist in, constitutions which they're founded upon, we try to take that and try to fit it. We take Gurmat, I learn it a little bit on a Sunday, and we take it and we try to fit it into that mind that's been already pre-molded by our environment. And then we say, it doesn't fit. Something doesn't fit here. Something has to give. But what if you had taken your mind and given it to the Guru, and your mind had molded into Gurmat, then you can take something from the world and try to fit it in and say, well, actually, this doesn't fit into Gurmat. What is your foundation of the mind and what you think in to the point where your thoughts extend from? Where are your questions coming from? What is the philosophy? One side of the world believes today that the world is moving towards the better. 
They say anything is progressive. That's an ideology. That the past was bad and the future is better. Anything, any change that we make in constitutions, in democracy, in legislation, any new movement that arises is for the better. There's a philosophy exists. Then there's another philosophy that is constantly saying, no, anything that is moving forward, Satan is doing it. And the past was better. And we're losing the plot. Does this ring a bell in our minds? Right? Moderate fundamentalists. Right? Exist within our sick, sick politics as well. Exist outside in, the, in your, your uh, what do you guys have here? Your, your Tories and your Labour Party. It exists within the Republicans and the Democrats. It exists within atheism versus religion. And not just, even in Tarm Devich, Koi Kariaya, Kaljug the Para Vadriaya, Kaljug is getting worse. Where does Guru Nanak Devji fit into this? Where does Gurmat fit into this? The world cried a cry when the world was at its worst. Sunim Pukar Datar Prab Guru Nanak Jagamahi Bhattaya. Maharaj came into the world. Not because it was time to. The Sansar ne Pukar Mari, the Pagats did in Ardas. Maharaj came and bestowed their Daya and planted Naam in the world, in the middle of Kaljug. So therefore in Gurmat it doesn't fit. Are we going towards the worse or are we going towards the better? Your mind is already consisted of which one do I have to choose? I must choose this or I must choose the other. But Gurmat is saying, hold on, don't jump into those philosophies and try to fit Gurmat into that. Try to fit those into Gurmat and you see, we realize they won't. So your political ideology of where your thoughts come from on the way that you view the world, the way that you view the things that you hear, will completely change and they'll align with Guru Sahib. We have to build these things to begin with, especially when you take the Guru's Vidya and put it inside of your heart and you become that. Sat Gur ki bani, Sat Sarup hai, Gur bani bani hai. You become the form of Gur bani. Your thoughts, your, they become the conversations. When you're reading Guru Bani, you're not reading it like a law book. You read it and you twist the English meanings and you say, does this fit into my perception on what I'm going to post on Twitter tonight? No, you look at it and you say, this is not a law book. I'm not trying to figure out clauses. What I'm trying to figure out is how do I talk to my creator? How do I talk to myself through this Bani? The Guru Bani becomes your thoughts. You begin to stop thinking. Once you stop thinking, then Guru Bani is flowing through your mind. And your thoughts become Guru Bani. Positive negative thoughts that are arising and extending through your thoughts, taking you away, they all disappear. Till you reach that avastha where you can lose your ego within this world and join a cause that is beyond. And then the world, what we call time, it bends. So now do you understand that Pagta Tasansariya Jodka Dinaya? The Pagats and the saints, they can never walk down the same path together. Why? Because one is facing the world and one doesn't even the world is this. One believes this is the truth and they're holding on to it. Because that's where the mind is. Somebody asked by Mani Singh Ji and they said, my mind runs away a lot. They said, why does my mind run? And by Mani Singh Ji responds and says, Say it with me. Where your attachments are. You want to live your life based on an ideology molded into, molded by your environment, by the world. That is not truth. And then you want to say that no, but Gurbani says, Antakal Narayan Simra Asi Jintam. I just need to remember God in my very last moment. And then I'll be liberated as well, right? You just need to believe. Who told you Sikhi was just about saying, telling yourself I'll believe? It's not. Because in your last moment, your mind will run to where your mo is, where your attachment is. You'll say, no, I'll think about God and I'll die then. If you have not done that your entire life, your mind will not be molded that way. Those are not the thoughts that are going to arise out of that sand in your mind, out of the ground in your mind. What's going to happen? You're going to sit there, time to die. All right, you're like, you know what? I got two minutes left. I'm going to do Vai Guru Simran, the one that you never did your entire life. No, you know what you're going to think of? Oh, I forgot to get life insurance. What am I having kids? I forgot to put my house in a trust to pass over to my children. Because your mind is going to run to where your mo is, where your attachments are. That's individually. Seva is done 
where there is no more attachment to self. Those are great so Gursikhs, jinnah ne aap pasand hai dukh, jag varsaya. They took pain upon themselves, but for a bigger cause. It was beyond them. To lose, to do that, you must lose your ego in this way. Jithe mo ho aagaya, othe seva bhi haar gai. Because then why you're serving yourself, not the Guru. What are you doing? Serving yourself. Let me tell you a quick story of how sometimes seva can be completely destroyed. And this is part of those eras. The British are in India. The Singhs are fighting against the British. There's a great Surbir, a great warrior in our history by the name of Baba Sham Singh Atari. Say the name with me. Baba Sham Singh Atari. They have done Sangat of Baba Fulla Singh Ji, Baba Nana Singh Ji, many great warriors of the time. They had a Dal regiment with them. They were about to go onto a bridge and attack and fight with the British that are coming across on the other side of the bridge. The British are all lined up on one side. The Singhs are going in and Baba Sham Singh Ji looks at their Singhs. And one of the Singhs with them, his name was Baba Tegha Singh. Originally his name was Baba Teja Singh. But because he was so great with his sword, with his Tegha, his name became Baba Tegha Singh. And he told all the other Singhs and he said, that we're going to go all across this bridge and jethe shi deep on the vela agyana pajnani don't turn your back if it means lay down your lives lay down your lives here because this blood that spills will set the foundations towards khalsa raj it will keep the pant flourishing par man de vich mo nahi leona don't bring any attachment inside of your mind the Singhs tiyar hoge, jikare shadde, the guard on the horses, ready to go, have their muskets on their shoulders, ready to attack. As they're riding through Baba Sham Singh, of course, jikare shadde, shadde, again ja reya. The British shoot, they shoot the arrows, they shoot their guns. Baba Sham Singh, the sarir sara binya gaya. On this bridge, you can only have one, maybe two people crossing at one time. And the British are lined up, whoever crosses the bridge, ta, 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 bas mari ja reya. Because they couldn't, the Singhs couldn't go back the other way. They were being attacked from the other side as well. They were surrounded. They said, Bas, hun siddhi janaya. Now is the time to give the hiddi. Shiddi yanda vela agaya. When the Singhs heard the jakara that Baba Sham Singh ji ne hun shiddi pa liya. From their head to the bottom of their toe, they've been shot with arrows and guns. Muskets have gone through their body. They've fallen off their horse and their body is laying on that bridge. Now the Singhs that have also crossed onto the bridge, they've realized our jatidhar is gone. The person that we were following and the person that was giving us guidance is gone. We've got no escape from the back or from the front. We're surrounded. And they had to make a split second choice just like that. The choice was, do we stand here, do we fight, do we give shihiddi? Or tactically, do we jump off the bridge, run away, try to save ourselves, to maybe we can do something else later. And it, sometimes it's easy to listen to this story and think, oh man, why would the, that's easy choice. I'm going to give shihiddi. In, in hindsight, it's 2020 vision. You're always going to think it's perfect afterwards. But in that moment, it's tactical. When I was a combat, combat engineer in the Canadian Army, we built a lot of these bridges. We laid out the, the structure of the battlefield to know who's going to come in, when, who's going to come out, making sure there's plan A, plan B, escapes, various different things like that. And in that moment, sometimes you have to make a decision like that, and it's your andro mobile pinda, whatever your foundation, whatever your thought is, you, you're going to think for the best in that moment. Those things decided to jump. Baba Tega Singh jumped, and a couple other things jumped with him. They jumped, they landed in the river, and they swam across to shore. When they came to shore and the British was on the other side of the bridge, there's nobody around them. As he crawled up onto the shore in this jungle in front of him, a big river is flowing away. Maybe some of the things didn't even make it out of that river. Baba Degha Singh gets up onto this and there Baba Sham Singh's spirit appears in front of him. His Jathidars, his Ustad's spirit appears in front of him and says, looks at him, points at him, looks at his student that has ran away from battle and says, Tu Guru Gobind Singh Ji da Sikh nahi. Te Guru Gobind Singh Ji tere Guru nahi. Guru Gobind Singh Ji is not your Guru. And 
you are not the student, the Sikh of Guru Gobind Singh Ji. Then he says, I am not your jathedar, I am not your leader, I am not your ustad. And you are not my follower, you are not my chilla. And the spirit turns and walks away. Vanishes. Baba Tega Singh, they are hearing this. And Androna the head that tot gaya. The heart broke in that moment. They said, maybe it was a tactical decision to run away from the battle, but my mumoria. What came in my mind? What was what was my decision in that moment? They could probably couldn't process it. They were young at this time. They said, you know what? I will go back and try to do seva. Baba Tega Singh tried everything in their life to try to do seva again. They didn't get seva again. They tried to go do kori and seva. They lived in the jungles. Baba Tega Singh lived until the age of 80 years old, crying in a cave. Baba Tega Singh, an 80 year old bajurg that has been homeless now for the majority of his life, is crying and telling this to Master Tara Singh. And Master Tara Singh is writing this at the turn of the century, right when India is about to be, become independent. Completely into a different era. But during those years, decades, Baba Tegga Singh said, as he's crying, and he said, my entire life under Baba Shyam Singh, I fought against bandits. And I became that which I fought to destroy. I fought to destroy thieves. And because I had no place to go, it was like my guru deserted me. It was like I ran away from the battle. I, I became the thief that I fought to destroy before. I became that. I became the homeless. They said, our kapre, our chole, as we were going through the jungles, they became so worn, so torn out. Even we couldn't get kapre to put upon ourselves. They said, I would sit there and beg for food, and nobody would give me food. And in my heart, all that was echoing was Baba Sham Singh's voice saying, Tu Guru Gobind Singh Ji da sekhani, te Guru Gobind Singh Ji tere guru ni. Those things endured a lot. In this time, yes, the British have taken over, annex Punjab, they're doing their thing. And at the turn of the independence, that is where Baba Tigga Singh is passing away, the entire era. In that time, things are beat, things are destroyed, philosophy is destroyed, Gurdwari are destroyed. From that time, continuously, one by one, generation after generation, six, seven, eight, and you guys have learned this already. You guys know this at the house already. This is the first generation that we have today that we are not being displaced. We're not having to survive and move to other countries. You have time, energy, and money. But the only problem is you forgot your kings. And like I said, 175 year olds is not, uh, year, years ago is not much. So there's a conversation that needs to take place. That how do you build the next era for the Panth? What do you need to do? During their era, they went to Portland, they were in England, they did the seva, they did as much as they could. Baba Atar Singh Mastuwana Wale, they did as much as they could. Sandhgyani Guru Bachan Singh Ji, during their era, they did what they did. And because of that, we are reading Gurbani today. We are reading, reading Vidya today. E karna karke, what were the tools that were used during Maharaja Ranjit Singh's time? Extend it back to the Darbar of Kalgi Tarpacha in Anandpur Sahib. How was the economy flourishing? How was the academics flourishing. In any era, look at the golden era of Islam. There was healthy debate. Everything was being written down in literature. The language was prospering, extended all the way from the east to the west. And through those healthy debates of growth and academics and writing, there was a kingdom of harmony in the golden age of Islam. Then, during Guru Gobind Singh Ji Satya Pacha Ji's Anandpur Sahib, there was Kaviji. There was great Kirtanis. Arts were flourishing. 
Academics were coming from across the world. The army is getting stronger. Children are growing up, getting every form of vidya that they possibly could. So the question is, we have been given a thought process of gulami, of slavery by being beat, always being in survival mode, survival mode. And you guys have heard this a million times in many speeches. My, my question comes to you now is, what is your job in this era? If you attach yourself to attachments and more and then we're turning our face away from the seva today. Maybe you're not standing on a bridge today, but you're sitting on a seat today. You're sitting in your houses today. And that is the same pant and the same seva that we've been continuously doing that for that time. It is the first generation that we have since the time before the, during the time of the British for the last 175 years before that as well where we're not getting beat down and we have a chance to at least breathe. We still have issues but at least you get to breathe to be like oh, okay can I enjoy myself for once and now through that enjoyment hasna khidna khana peena hasna khidna Mara says the next line, you guys know it? Visar gaya hai? Marna. You forgot death. And because you've forgotten death, you've forgotten the purpose of why we came into this akar, why we came into this city. So here's a couple questions I have for you. Okay? Current strengths of the current day Sikh Panth. If you compare the Sikh Panth today, say during the time of Maharaj and Ranjit Singh, prior to that, during Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj, or compared to very various other Panths. What strengths do you think we have today? Thought probing question. The question is where do we struggle today? Khalsa Raj, Sikh Raj is inevitable. That's one thing you have to know. It's inevitable. It's not like, oh, will it happen? How will it happen? All that. No, 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 that's not. It is inevitable. Why? Maharaj said their bachan, Panth Khalsa Kheti Meri Karo Sambal Honte Sikeri That the Khalsa Panth is my flower garden and I will take care of it. I will control it, I will water it, I will fertilize it because I'm the Madli, I'm the gardener. A saying came up to Vampur Kwans and said, Oh Papa Ji, Panth Da Ki Banu, Panth Da Bada Ukhaya, Ki Kariye? He said, Minu Ka Ta Puch Da Hai, Onu Ja Ke Puch Da Hai, Panth Sa Ji Hai, If it's my Panth Hai, Then they didn't think they were going to see it. You trust he has a plan, right? The question is, where does your seva and where does your enjoyment, where do you get the cushioning of Guru Gobind Singh Ji throughout the seva? And that is the beauty of it. There is a, huh? It will go towards that. But what is the fun within that? You live within the chaos. And yet you step out of it and you're in bliss. My asked to Mampurk and they said, Baba ji, sokh chahida ya. Asi dukhi bade ya, sokh bada chahida. Or kande rabnu ka to pooj de ya. Why do you keep calling out to God? They say, oh sokh ni dinda. Kande kyo? Sura ke ni kya rab sokh deen wala ya. Or kande oda namo kala ya karta. Oda kalesh pon wala ya. I bow down to one that is the creator of chaos. Namo kala ya karta. Oda kalesh pon wala ya. What happened here? Can you recognize the game of beauty within the chaos and enjoy bliss within the chaos? Within the game? But a singer ne varvara das ki tiya ke he sache pacha varvara janam lavange varvara seva karange until your Panth is established because this is bliss for us. It is ananda for us. So in today's day, where is your seva thinking? And can you think like that? Can you think you are going to be taking over a kingdom? Can you be thinking of establishing Khalsa Panth Raj with Nam, Bani, Simbaran across the world where arts are flourishing? Where Gurmat Naam is flourishing? Sare Sukhi Vasareya, Kalesh Odevich Vich Aldreya. How you're establishing a place where tarm can exist, freedom of tarm, freedom of food and clothes, a place where education is, uh, is present.
a place where econo econ economics can flourish. And how can you build those things in your current day month today? So, if, so here's a couple of questions. Guru Nanak Dev Ji Satche Paatsha, Do Vele Ton Laake, To Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj, You've stepped throughout Atiyas, throughout, you've, you've learned the Atiyas. Guru Arjan Dev Ji Maharaj Ne Shidi Paaiya. Guru Har Gobind Sahib Satche Paatsha, Krishti Akal Sena, And Jaake, Musliman Nawaste Masih Tui Banai, Kaiyan Da, Una Ne Uphar Kita, They saved many. Guru Teg Baadar Maharaj Ne Apna Seas Ditta, Jinnu Hapa Hindi Di Chadda Raak Deya. They protected the Kashmiri Pandits. Bathiriyanu Singha ne jawaar waar ja ke bachaya. Aaj de din tu si apne aap vich socho. Go from an individual state to your local Sangat where the people that your friends and family, where you have influence, and then extend that soch, your thought to where, what influence can I make upon these people so it can reach your circle of concern to where the entire world is being affected by your presence. So if tu si apne aap vich nahi aaj, you're not able to serve, you stop serving today, who will that affect? The J Apostle said, well, if I stop doing anything, well, nobody's going to really notice anything. But think deeper than that. In one way or another. Met somebody and they're like, oh, so I'm about to, I'm going to do this talk, but like, I don't really know anything. Like, by the way, I don't know anything. Uh, forgive me if I make any mistakes and blah, 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 blah. I'm like, Panji, Galakuroge. Say what you're about to say. Nimrta is not what you project outside. Nimrta is inside of you. Nimrta is something inside of you. You're just projecting your insecurities outside. There's a difference. When you tell yourself, oh, I can't do it, that is not Nimrta, that is your insecurity. There's a difference between that. But Jethanu Pataya Guru Thardinali, if the Guru is with you, how can you say you can't do it? Guru ne karona sab. That means you're, you have ankar. Your ankar bol reya that I'm not able to do it. That's your ego. That's not your humility. You have to search deeper than that to be able to find the pavna, to understand these questions. Where do you fit into the bigger picture? When you let, are able to let go of your ego, you will understand. You all have skills. So here's another question. I got to work. I don't think I'm you know, kere pai sahab aage aaj lecture karan vaste. Anji? And making us think all these things, man, I just want, I just want to hear, do some vaikru, vaikru, go home. E gala soch ke, if you had unlimited resources, you don't have to work today. You had financial freedom. If I gave you a billion dollars right in front of you and said, go do seva, what would you do? It's vichar nahi hai. Have you thought of it? Have you think, thought like that before? If you haven't, you should. Sit down, daydream. He said, if I had a billion dollars, hundred billion dollars, unlimited resources today, what would I do for the month? What do you think is holding you back? And if you start thinking that way, you will realize, it's not that far away. Oh, you need Maya? I, we know people that have 500 million dollars in assets sitting there waiting to give to people that are wanting to do seva. We can get you that money. The month can get it. Did Sant Baba Nidan Singh not stand at Hazur Sahib and say that Maharaj, I need Maya in order to run Langar Sahib Gurdwara at Hazur Sahib today? Guru Kalgi Tarpacha appeared in front of him and said, Kisa Mera, the pocket is mine and my hand is on top of your head. Go do whatever you want. Ter lagge paise de. Guru Kalgi Tarpacha at Sangat Sahib Gurdwara said that underneath this, there is a whole bunch of Gold and sonna and wealth, unlimited amounts. Mera khalsa jadho pargat hooga, jadho maya di load hoogi, is thadde samane pe hoogi. So your belief or your inability to do it because of lack of maya is actually your lack of faith. It is your lack of belief in the panth in itself. And this is why the panth sadde samane pe thaya. Maharaja Ranjit Singh, jadho ona ne raaj vi liya na, missiles were fighting each other, they were killing each other. Ona ne aap switch ek wari vi, jasa Singh, Allu waliya, Ram gadiya, they didn't get along politically. When jasa Singh, Ram gadiya, would go hunting, then Baki Singh and ona no ja ke kabje vji kaale, they would kidnap, they would kidnap each other. Then ona ne vapas vi liya na, they would take over each other's territories. 
if there's anybody that we owe that sikraj to, it was because of the belief of one woman. There was one woman that caused Maharaja Ranjit Singh's Raj to take place. The Ramgadiya missile went to one side and they were being surrounded and being attacked in the Shukar Chakiya and various other missiles came to attack. Osa Jangadevich was the name of Gurbak Singh. He passed away. He was killed by the Ramgadiyas. Gurbak Singh was killed. Rani Sadakar then said, enough is enough. Her husband was uh, by Gurbak Singh. Her husband was killed. And she said, enough is enough. She did the unthinkable. She stopped her mo, she stopped her attachment, and she thought of the panth. What did she say? She said, I will take my daughter, and I will get my daughter married to the son of the person that killed my husband. Think about it that way. I will get my daughter married to the son of the person that killed my husband so these fights can stop. And the son of that person was Maharaj Ranjit Singh. They created a truce between these two missiles and the power of those two missiles allowed other smaller missiles to become allies and they were already surrounding Lahore. They're already hanging out around Lahore. Just like we're hanging out around Buckingham Palace. <laughs> you know, hanging out around Lal Kila, hanging out around Lahore today. They're all just hanging out, fighting each other. Mrani Sadakar stopped her mo, got that marriage done, got that truce done, became the most powerful missile. They just walked up to Lahore and they took over. And Maharaja Ranjit Singh became the king of Lahore. It wasn't that hard. They had the resources right in front of them. But somebody needed to go and slap him across the face. That's all it took. You have to remember throughout history we've done it. We have all the Gurbani, Khajanna, everything that we have here. Ready to lose your ego. But if you hold on to your mo, then it'll be like Baba Tega Singh turning their face away. Something came into my mind. And they jumped. You guys know the issues throughout the month today. And Pai Jigraj Singh and I used to talk about it all the time. We were like, all right, we need institutions. We need a lot of Sikhs to go and develop. We need to go to Sikhs practicing Shastar Vidya. We need academics at the high level, highest level. We need businesses flourishing. We, for flourishing. we should be able to do this for Punjab and that for Punjab. But there are things which are going on. When they come to say, let's do this, and they say, why do you do it? It means We realized the Sikhs didn't even know what Sikhi was. So we had to take a step back. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We've got to teach them first. Let's tell them about what Sikhi is. And they don't know how to like, We don't know how to learn. We need to create systematic Sikhi. We need to answer all the simple questions. The only thing holding back the Pant from reaching its full potential is Param. What is it? Param. Your doubts. Your doubts, your illusions, your misconceptions, your misunderstanding, your ignorance. From you reaching your own full potential individually as well. So, Osdevetje. And then, then we, what we end up doing, we project that upon each other. You know, there's a saying, If you're able to see the irka and the jealousy and the hatred in somebody else, you know, these are the ways that we do in India. You know where that is projecting from? You don't have a uh, dritta within your own heart. You're not stable within your own mind. And that insecurity is being projected upon somebody else. That's why Mara says, Jiske andar taat prai, tiska kadena hove pala. Jede andar jealousy, taat prai hove, you have anger and jealousy towards somebody, ke o kato ot sakada. And you'll pull their legs down. Somebody is happy to say, we'll both stay down, but tu ni upar ot sakada. You can't go alone. Why tu me tu me to jada vada ho gaya. Rather than lifting everybody up, mere serdi upar chado. And the moment where Rani Sadakor said, you know what? 
my family is no more, but you take my family. Tu de. Do whatever you want. We're not going to fight. You get all of my land through this marriage. You get all of my wealth. You get my succession. Sara kuch te agatata. In that moment that uh, Khalsa Raj came to be. That was the moment that I was waiting for. So to see aap apne vich chalo. Baki nu tisi ki kaisa kadeya. Are you projecting that towards somebody else today? Towards your family? Towards another jathibandi? Towards a different philosophy within the panth, outside of the panth. Ki to sit any kisi dilat the khachre. So, a chidu apne manavich vicharan waliya khair. So, here's some simple things. Haji. Chalo apna ego apne paase rakhe. We focus on growing rather than weaknesses, rather than our individual jajakar. Focus on panth ek jajakar. You know, jajakar ki utar miya ka papi ko dand di hoye. Thik hai, individual contributions to lotusi apne kirt kar rahe hain. That kirt, what is it attaching yourself to? What is it contributing within the panth? It's not going to go with you. In fact, it doesn't actually belong to you. You know, Alexander the Great, when he passed away, he said something to his advisors. He said, when I die, make sure you take all my wealth and you put it on carts, load it up, and take out a whole parade for me towards where my funeral is. So that people can see how great Alexander was. How great, how much wealth he accumulated. Then he said, my second request, make sure outside of my casket, I have naked hands. And they say, like, people are already going to be scared that their king died. But you want naked hands, khali hath, hanging out of a dead body? And said, yes, ek yun. He said, I want everybody to realize no matter how much wealth I accumulated, my elephants, my chariots, my horses, my gold, I'm going empty handed. There was a, a Jagyasu that came up to Raja Janakji. And he came and asked a question. He said, I searched far and wide. I would like to know on how to get my mind to focus. Physical or mental. What is the thing holding him back? There are subtle levels of attachments that we hold ourselves to, even to our own body and our own mind. Tell me, how did you like my city? He said, city Here's the thing what you have to do. Take this little bowl, this little bowl of oil. It's filled to the brim. I need you to walk around the entire city without it dropping a single drop of oil. And if you do, concentration and therefore I can give you the answers. Let's let's get you to practice. He said, Oh, no worries for sure. I'll get I'll get you to answer my questions. He grabbed the oil, he started to walk, and Raja Janik said, actually there's one caveat, there's one thing. I'm gonna have a soldier walk behind you. A soldier's gonna have a naked sword, and he's gonna be spinning his naked sword. And as soon as one drop of oil falls, he's allowed to take off your head. <laughs> the whole game has changed now. He's like, whoa, whoa, hold on. There wasn't risk involved before. There was no risk involved. But now there's risk. So he's focused. He's like, I can't turn back now. The soldier's already spinning his sword. He focuses, walks around the entire city. Guess what Raja Janakji does? He sets up fireworks, mele, people dancing, music festivals, people throwing color at each other. Everyone's enjoying so many various different people are wearing different clothes and cloaks and colors being thrown and music and dances. Fireworks are in the air. The Jigyasu, which means seeker, walks around the entire city, arrives back to Raja Janak and says, Look, I brought the oil, not a single drop of water. Here you go. Completed the mission. Raja Janakji says, Hold on. How would you like my city? Did you like my city? Did you like the festivals? Did you know there was a music festival going on? Did you get to pay attention to it? Did you see all the colors? Did you see the fireworks? And he says, I couldn't focus on that. I had to focus on this. All I knew was the guy with the naked sword bouncing around behind me. Because if I dropped a drop of oil, my head would have been taken off. And he's like, that's it. The reason why you're not able to concentrate 
because you get distracted is because you forget death. Kabir kaal karanta abhay kar. Ab karta swaital paachay kachu na hoega jo sir par aave kaal. Because death is upon your head. So then how do you forget death? Mara Satya Paachay gives us a hukam to see a naked kirpan every single day. That's why Appa Kirpan Singh Roj Sod, they have darshan of their kirpan. They keep their shastras on them. Because in this way, there is a lot of joy. They have seen the shastras. The whole world has been raised. The moment your mind goes away from that into the distractions, then you start to see your own life. You're going to start remembering. The girl is fine, I'm going to do this, but my money, my clothes, my clothes, my Instagram following. You're going to go into that and holy, holy, your ideology, where we began our conversation, you've assimilated yourself into a whole different culture now. You've assimilated yourself in Maya entirely. So, is de vich to see, kimi apne apnu dekh sakde hain growing out of it. Ha, ek cheeza cheez zarur In Lahore, we own 70% of the wealth during Maharaja Ranjit Singh's Raj. 70% of the wealth was owned by the Sikhs and they're only 15% of the population. Jede Raj kar rahe se ke. Is pakh de vich kyunke the businesses, the economy, how it was being run, Sikhan de aap suj prem se ga. They had networks with each other. They were working with each other during those times. Here are six pipelines Singhs and I had put together that the Panth needs to focus on today. If you do not have these six pipelines, these are needed in any growth of any Raj, of any kingdom that has ever existed, they need to be there. If they are not, your Panth will collapse. Your, your, your uh, kingdom will collapse. But they must be flourishing. So what do I mean this by this? You have non-profits. You have your seva. You have your volunteer work. And I want you, before we go into each and single one of them and what are possibilities, and I've done workshops with, with Sangat and Gursik and thinkers like yourself who have listed a whole bunch of things that they would love to do with the beginning question where I asked, where do you think our strengths are? What is something that you could potentially do? If I give you a billion dollars, what would you do today? And listed it all. I'm going to show you that list. We have non-profit sector, we've got the prachar sector, without education, six not knowing Sikhi, then fir raj karke bhi apagi karna. Jithe gurmatada uthe abhyasi ni reya, gurmatada naami ni reya. You have business, you have funding, politics, security, yet you are not contributing that into your daily Sikhi. We've been taught and assimilated into thinking Sikhi is just something you believe in your heart in the back of your mind, you go on a Sunday, Matharde, come home, buzz back and go to your own work, personal work, personal contributions, personal abhyas, personal properties. This is where all our whole conditioning has become around this personal following. My friends, my popularity, what do they think about me? Not individually, just the environment we live in and grew up in, this is what's been given to us. These are six pipelines that need strengthening. Let's look at nonprofits first. Here, there, you know, nonprofits is one of the a great strengths of our youth and our generation today. Everyone's running a charity. Everyone's doing seva, they're doing volunteer work, but your sikhi does not contain just in charity work, nonprofit work. What are some things that you need in, say, in, 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 in nonprofits? You need advocacy. You need Sikh rights, justice, identity, Karpan rights, the star, Panji Kakar, Jate Sikhane Jake, Apani Pashan Dasani, they're going to show their Nishan. Who is setting up each single point here is, is its own charity there. The reason I'm sharing this is because I can't do this alone. Kalla ni kar sagda. This is a whole Panthik effort that needs to be taking place. Literature, theories, books, calls to action. In the golden age of Islam, the most prosperous times were when healthy debate was happening and they were able to put their egos aside and they were growing and learning from each other. In the Roman era, in the Greek era, there was healthy debate and that's what caused it to grow. Once there is division in the debate and they're tackling each other down in the debate, then the Roman Empire fell apart. 
the Greek emperor, empire fell apart. So this is where literature, theories, books, calls to action, youth development, community development, social enterprise, environmental arts, Gurdwara initiatives, water and drug crisis in Punjab. Social enterprises are businesses that are being run just to fund non-profit. We take so much of the Pant's money today and we spend into that campsite that we're renting just to do Sikhi. We're going to take all a bunch of money from the Sangat and we're going to go spend it over there. There is no economy of the Pant being circulated. Who's going to run it? Everyone can say, These are the attitudes that we have towards each other. There's no trust in that. Arts, digital art, applications, sick museums, sick arts, mobile museums, digital archives. Things are individually doing all of these things. But can you put a lot of these things together? We run an exercise called State of the Panth, in which we make six, seven different groups, and we give them their core beliefs. We give them their rules and the things that they believe, and we give them a set amount of money. We said, you have this amount of money, say $700,000. Someone has $300,000. Somebody has no money and somebody has two billion, two million dollars. They've got a lot of money. And we send these groups out to go and achieve what their, whatever their objectives is. We send them out in the, in, just in the exercise. They go around, but they get distracted. The things that we wrote that, whatever you do, you must believe in, I don't know, saying like wearing red junis or something like that. Just made up random things. Somebody else believes in specifically this. Every time we do the exercise, everyone starts arguing about their beliefs. But nobody's won the game yet. All the other things listed on that piece of paper were a distraction. It, your beliefs had nothing to do with what your objective was. And you got caught up in it. That's the, only at the end do they realize why the game is called State of the Pant. This is where a more and ego comes from. Does that make sense? So this is non-profits. You have, uh, you have environmental, take ideas from this, write it down, add more into it. You have the prachar sector of the, one of the six pipelines I was talking about. You have education, fostering healthy relationships and institutions, regardless of controversies, strong pull in all six sanstas in, in Punjab. Our charities and organizations that we run today, they will exist and they may go. But the Sampardas, the Taksals, the lineages, Akal Takht will remain forever. The Taksals will remain for a long time. The, the Dals will remain for a t long time. And so connecting with larger institutions, with smaller institutions, and sharing and using resources, this is something that doesn't exist right now. No, no, ignore that. Using all strengths within the Panth is very, very important to recognize what they even are. Anji? So expanding prachar in, in uh, multilingual offerings, prachar influence in academic space, at least 30 professors installed in Sikh academia within large institutions. Then, we went from prachar, we, through Vidya centers, we go into business. And this is a sector that we've not actually hit within the Panth today yet. Supporting Sikh businesses, innovation and technologies advancements, where the Panth is supporting that, putting money into growth, Growing the economy of sikh owned businesses, where it's going to come back within the month. And to grow, that is going to funnel your, your Maya funding, which is micro lending, repayment contributions, crowdsource funding, private equity. There are groups where we, they are focused on putting their money together, $1 million they have on the table every single year. And they say, you as a young person come to the table, you've got an idea, you've got energy. We'll put it on the table. But do you have the idea or have you been holding yourself back from that mo the entire time? So Kair, we need to build our own black rock. A majority of, sick, uh, of real estate in the United States is owned by one company called BlackRock. And that is Jewish owned. If in the Muslim community, one person steps up and says, hey, I'm going to do something for the Muslim community. Guess what they do? They said, you're taking care of, your children are taking care of, your family's taking care of, your children's education is taken care of. Sorted. And to, in our community right now, you, can, you guys know the answer. Both okay. The Granthi Singh status, which is the Baba Buddhaji status. 
ਵੀ ਵਲੋਰ ਇਟ ਬਲਾਈ ਓਏ ਚਲ ਮੇਰਾ ਕੰਮ ਕਰ ਜੇ ਬਾਬਾ ਬੁੱਢਾ ਜੀ ਦੀ ਕਦਰ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੈ ਨਾ then the that will show you where the standard of the panth will exist where baba buddha ji is lower to just uh, the status this padvi of that is lower to just a gurdwara employee haan ji so where is the funding coming from how do we build the private equity funding that is investing in multiple multiple markets across the world so that the panth has strength has commodities has gold has oil reserves to that point think about maharaj ranjit singh's raj where people from england and europe were leaving to go and get funding or get, getting jobs in india under maharaj ranjit singh because the currency was higher they, they would make more money just like india to aaj chhad ke yaar itthe paise puse nahi pan chalde bahar chalde hain let's go make some money in england let's go make some money in canada it was the opposite that time how can you raise and elevate your currencies and your economic status within the bond to that state again khair you've got funding i won't go through each and every one of the char kanti lag jane hain you got security and this is a thing that doesn't exist we need a private standing military that can have that can be supporting local areas through security work through anything but the panth should be having a standing literally military force ready for action at any time tyar but tyar mindset we should be going through cyber security global setup of security networks private military service private policing private medicare all of these sort of things and they should exist not just don't just think birmingham or london i want you to start expanding and thinking big across the world even if you need to be like somebody like pai rama singh ji who came to countries and went to countries and he heard that there was one sick living there there was one punjabi living there he would go walk on the streets and say do you know where the sick was do you know somebody that has a dastar like me went all the way around sings we went to australia this is how six in sikhi in, in australia was founded the one punjabi happened to be there gursik went all the way to australia knocked on every door be like have you seen somebody like literally knocking on people's door do you know somebody who lives down the street that has a turban like me jodon us sikh nu ja ke labbya sat inside of their house and started giving them sangat taught them gurbani taught them sikhya taught them how to do naam simran be like you're the only other sikh here i traveled from all the way i heard there was a sikh here this is just literally on the basis i heard not even like i saw a photo i know their name i know their address that's how a, a sikhi in australia was founded to the singa ne ja ja ke utte every single household they built it and now hun aap kehne hai panth bada phailya hoya hai there was a bajorg in victoria vancouver island where victoria is today close to vancouver in uh, canada bc there was a bajorg during my grandpa's time he arrived there and he bought i don't know how many 200 300 400 acres of land that he could at the time his his plan his blueprint was to create a whole six city he even laid it out the blueprints are there where there's guru nanak avenue guru angad dev ji avenue guru amar das ji avenue his plan was to build a whole six industry in a center with schools and hospitals everything there but the the succession wasn't there once he passed away his children all married outside of the other outside of the faith ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਕਿਸੇ ਨੇ ਗੋਰੇ ਨਾਲ ਵਿਆਹ ਕਰਦਾ ਕਿਸੇ ਕੀ ਆਲੇ ਕਾਲੇ ਨਾਲ ਵਿਆਹ ਕਰਦਾ ਦੇ ਸੋਲ ਦ ਲੈਂਡ ਦੇ ਸਪਲਿਟ ਦ ਪ੍ਰਾਪਰਟੀਜ਼ ਐਂਡ ਦੇਰ ਈਗੋ ਐਂਡ ਇਟਸ ਜਸਟ ਰਿਟਨ ਇਨ ਅ ਬੁੱਕ ਨਾਓ ਆਈ ਵੈਂਟ ਆਈ ਵੈਂਟ ਟੂ ਦੈਟ ਲੈਂਡ ਐਂਡ ਲੁਕਡ ਐਂਡ ਆਈ ਵਾਸ ਲਾਈਕ ਮੈਨ ਇਫ ਵੀ ਸਟਿਲ ਹੈਡ ਥਿਸ ਟੁਡੇ ਇਫ ਓਨਲੀ ਮੇਬੀ ਗਿਵ ਇਟ ਟੂ ਦ ਪੰਥ ਬਟ ਹੂ ਨੋਸ ਵਾਟ ਦ ਪੰਥ ਵਰ ਹੈ ਡਨ ਕੈਨ ਹੀ ਦਾ ਬਜੁਰਗ ਵਾਸ ਬਿਗ ਥਿੰਕਿੰਗ ਦੈਟ ਇਨਸਪਾਇਰਡ ਮੀ ਐਸ ਅ ਕਿਡ ਲਾਈਕ ਵਾ ਵੀ ਨੀਡ ਟੂ ਬੀ ਥਿੰਕਿੰਗ ਲਾਈਕ ਥੈਟ ਵੀ ਨੀਡ ਟੂ ਬੀ ਥਿੰਕਿੰਗ ਹਾਊ ਵੀ ਕੈਨ ਬਾਈ ਆਊਟ ਥਿਸ ਮਾਊਂਟੇਨ ਯੂ ਨੀਡ ਟੂ ਥਿੰਕ ਲਾਈਕ ਥੈਟ ਥਿੰਕ ਬਿਗ because like i said ma you probably knew somebody that knew someone in khalsa raj like that's the distance that we have ko jyada nahi hai and politics if you want a global say in something imagine we had sikh majority in 10 parliaments around the world that could speak in the g20 and if the g20 needed to make a decision about anything there's a majority of six say in that can you have you thought about it like that yes we're at the stage of only like ek ek banda mp ban gaya chalo unne aap da kaam karna shuru kar dena there's a lack of trust there's a lack of working there's a lack of education there's a lack of networking 
But until we take that soj, the thinking that we have on an individual level, it won't turn into a communal level. You start the conversation today, maybe in five years, ten years, that conversation will start taking place. You need sick packs. You need organizations that fund politicians with an agreement to pass whatever is in sick interest. You need lobby groups. You need to have say, whenever there is a decision made in the US, there are lobby groups that are Jewish owned, that are Muslim owned, that push a lot of, lot of money. We're talking millions and billions of dollars into saying something that is only in sick interest. Why do you think the US will never ever speak against Israel? Because most of the lobby groups in the United States are Jewish owned. No matter, it doesn't matter what's right. It depends who has a hand in that. Does that make sense? So if you want to keep push to things at those levels, then you've got to start thinking of how to develop those systems in the month today. How can you help with this? You, we need accelerators. We need to accelerate the youth's thinking today to be able to think big with those skills, to learn how to build the businesses, accelerate nonprofits, build businesses using networks within Sikhi, learn the skills from people that are already successful within the Sikh month, and grow that. Political accelerator, which is an idea, it's not been created. If you guys want to create the political accelerator, do. We've created a nonprofit accelerator. We're developing a, a business accelerator, and their youth accelerators exist, like TKS already. There is, we've sent things to go to the TKS world accelerators to come out of it and start developing projects. You need to start these conversations within your youth groups as well. Focus summits where the sick network of organizations will come together and start sharing these resources like I stated in the State of the Month workshop, where you've got what you need, but you've got what you need, and you've got what you need. How can you make that work together? Rather than apna apna karna. Association of Sikh Executives, you need Astans, facilities, buy your campsites here, buy facilities, buy Sikh-owned retirement homes here. Find a problem and find a Sikh-oriented solution to that and just pursue it. Because like I said, this is a massive month to handle. So many little, little things that we've highlighted right in front of you. And while I'm speaking, maybe a billion ideas have started popping in your mind as well. Oh, I could kind of do that. Well, actually in my workplace, I could do Here's something I could do. You need to be able to become vocal on that, share it in a place. And we don't have those platforms where we can sit down and synergize our networks in that way at the moment. So here's a quick plug, just kind of at the end, of a project that we started when we found that there was a lack between a lack of connection between those that were young, energetic, and inexperienced, but had good ideas, with those that were old, had a lot of money, but had no time, but wanted to fund. We started Anandpur Institute, which is a six-month accelerator program, which takes your project ideas and connects you with the skills and the networks necessary to develop your project and launch it and give you those things. So in, an, in a simple way, you bring a project idea, you have an idea I want to do for this for the month. You bring it to the table. Experience things work with you in helping define your vision. You get accepted into the accelerator program. You join a four day boot camp where we teach you about Sikhi, thinking big, develop you with skills, help you iron out the vision of your project. Then for six months, every week you are being trained by professionals and experts and thought leaders in their respective fields. Somebody that's a master marketer is going to come and teach you how to market your project. Someone that is a master fundraiser and worked with big funds is going to tell you how to build funds Fundraising and maybe even invest in private equity to be able to grow those things. Someone that's, gonna, that's a salesperson is going to come and tell you how to build a pitch deck. Somebody that's in structuring, they're going to tell you how you can best structure your organization. They will connect you with all of these skills. For six months, you are developing the vision that you built in the boot camp. At the end, what we're doing this year, we just finished the boot camp. The accelerator program is undergoing. We've got nine to 12 projects already undergoing. In November, at the end, 
all of them are going to be invited at the end to Stanford University, where we're going to invite all these investors. We've got families that have over $200 million in assets wanting to give. <laughs> but you barely get time with these guys. You call them, I've got an idea, you start talking, I don't think that's going to work. I'll see you later. But to be able to sit in those circles, to be able to build your pitch and present it, you're going to get a chance to say your pitch that you've been working on for six months, where you identify the problem you're about to solve, where you've worked on that, your product, which is the solution to that, why are you are best situated to provide that solution, or why your product will provide that solution, what is your track record, how you're going to do it, and then what is your, what do you need from the investor to be able to achieve this project of yours. So we've already built half this network as an accelerator program for you to build your projects on the various ideas that we just talked about. Six different pipelines. It, this is just a non-profit accelerator. Next year, we want to start launching a business accelerator, where it's not just non-profit space. It has to be done for Seva. I want your business to succeed, where you are making millions, if not billions. I'd rather have a sick having that money. I'd rather have sick families being elevated to that state, where then the Panth can elevate. We can start have, be sitting in those networks, in those circles, where we have influence over lobbyists and various other people. Kar. Then once all of these projects, year after year, year after getting together, there's, there's going to be an annual summit being held called SNOW, called Sick Network of Organizations. And the Sick Network of Organizations is going to be that where everyone is going to be sharing their ideas, growing their network, sharing resources, and developing further on their projects. This might mean some organizations merge. This might mean some might split off. You've got skills now. You've got networks with six months of big thought leaders. You're getting their numbers. You're getting their contacts. You're getting networks with each other. And you're getting actual finances by the end of it to go launch your project for the month. The next era of the Panth is system development. Because like I started at the beginning, it's been 175 years. You're the first generation that has gotten a chance to sit down and say, parents, my grandfather has to suffer through 1947. My father had to suffer through 1984. What am I doing today? Am I just going to sit on Netflix and eat and just like uh, talk on Twitter? Like, oh, I don't like this person. You know, like, where is our state at? What are we really focusing on? So think big, my brothers and sisters. Throw it over the moon. Guru Gobind Singh, this is just more of it, right? You can apply now. Oh, you can't apply now. You can apply next year when we do it in June again. So my point being is, Guru If you have faith on Guru Sahib Ji, nothing is impossible. The Pant is rich. The Pant is royal, and you are that bloodline. You are that path. Mara Sache Pacha ne sadde upar hath rakh kiya ki if I've sacrificed my four sons, I've got no worries. Koi chinta nahi kyon? Mera ek aur puttar betha. I've got one more son waiting. That is the entire Khalsa Pant. Mara has given you that elevated padvi, the status, to say this is my son that lives on and will take over my rule. O ek jadi soch apni and sure, maybe I, I grew up with the same thing. Your parents might be like, You're not going to make it in this world. You're not going to make it in this world. You now have that Purusan Guru Sahib Ji. You have Gurubani with you. You have every tool with you to overcome your mental struggles, your physical struggles. And then once, if you do it for the Pant, Guru Sahib will take care of it. Just like Baba Nadan Singh Ji. Just like Baba B. Singh Nangabad. Just like Maharaja Ranjit Singh. Guru te pro sarakhna and start system building in this way. Think beyond your own lifetime. Mo ni karna. Jiddan mo aagya, udhan tot gaya sara. The moment you start building and you're like, you know, that's a lot of money, I'll do it for myself. I guarantee your kingdom that you've built will not last. Because the Guru da hatha chakya jana. The moment you say, this is not for me, I will take myself out of it and it will continue for the Panth. Beyond me, think 500 years. Your grand, great grandchildren will probably won't remember your name. You need to start thinking that far. Why? Because it's automatically, what's in it for me? All of us are going to be dead and gone by that point. 
We're in an era where in 200 years they will look back and read our history and say, oh, those six of 2024, they didn't know anything, man. They had the most Netflix accounts in all of Birmingham. <laughs> That's not an actual fact, I'm just saying. <laughs> but if you want facts like that to be read, or you want Panthic facts, they're going to be proud. Those Bajorgs of ours did everything that they could for the Panth. Wow, I wish we could go into back into Pratan times and I could touch their feet. Because that's what we think now. We're like, wow, those things in the jungle. Tara Singh Va, who gave Shahidi. Sham Singh Atari, who gave Shahidi. They came in front of you. I'm not going to be like, how you doing, man? Why call sir? It's not, I'm going to fall at their feet. I'm like, wow, Kinni Kamal the Jeevan. But Pai Taru Singh comes in front of me, I'm going to fall at his feet. Namaskar Dundotkar. Guru Pai Gala Mil Gala Lave. I'm going to hug him. I'm going to fall at his feet. I'm going to matha take. Because he is my Rupiah, the form of my Guru in front of me. So the service that you do today will turn you into the form of the Guru. Will make you merge with that. That is the seva you can do. But Jai Mo Agya. If you work on yourself, then Ohi Jitte Rangya O Bajorga Ne Keda Kita Kuch Kita Sika. So Panth Vardaya Ho Me Marniya Guru Ki Bani Sat Zroop Hai Guru Bani Bani Hai Pullanchi Kande Khima While Talking While Speaking I Made Many Many Mistakes Please Forgive Me Ji Vahe Guru Ji Ka Khalsa Vahe Guru Ji Ki Fateh If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, share and subscribe. Please donate and help spread Guruji's message. Link is in the description below. Vaheguruji ka khalsa, Vaheguruji ki fateh.